So in this video, I'm going to take you through a question I get asked all the time, which is how to recognize whether or not a fearful avoidant attachment style misses you after a breakup. So we're in specifics going to go through five major things a fearful avoidant will often do if they are really missing you after a breakup. And they sort of are in progressive order. So number one, they will tend to reach out indirectly. So they may reach out because you have some of their stuff. And of course there's like logistics. Of course you may have to do that, but they might reach out and say something like, like, let's say you've already broken up. They picked up their, their stuff from you already. They might say, Hey, have you seen my pair of boots? Or have you seen X, Y, Z from me recently? Or, Hey, I ran into your friend, you know, like these indirect ways of reaching out. And what they're trying to do is make an excuse for getting closer and knowing what's going on in your life without having to be vulnerable in the process, right? So that's like the indirect reach out. It's like, I want to reach out to you, but I don't want to be vulnerable. Um, so that's number one. Then if there is a bit of conversation that goes back and forth, the next big sign you're looking for is do they go and rehash nostalgic memories? So they talk about, oh, the time we did X, Y, Z, or I miss when we used to you know, do this fun thing or that fun thing. Um, and that's their way of, again, trying to kind of feel you out and take like that little step forward without having to say outright that they miss you or um, be too vulnerable or expose themselves as still having feelings or things of that nature. So that'll be the next sort of stepping stone I'll often see from a fearful avoidant. The third thing I will see quite frequently is that they may open emotional conversation without trying to discuss commitment. So this will be like if the nostalgic memory peace goes well, um, they may proceed to say, you know, um, I'm going through this thing in my life or that thing, or ask deep questions about you and what you're going through and, and, you know, what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. And they'll take that to the point of saying, has it been hard for you? Um, have you been having a difficult time? Are you finding that it's taking a bit of time to get over kind of implying that that's what they're going through, but without, again, being too vulnerable. So you'll see like opening up that next layer. And again, that's why I said these things are progressive. They won't do this all in one shot. This will happen over time, over a couple of days, over a few conversations. Um, and then what you'll see, number four, um, is they may proceed to even ask about your dating life nonchalantly. So they won't say, are you dating somebody? Cause I want to see if there's still something for us. They won't be that obvious. They will say, Oh, you know, is anyone in your life, you know, and, and they'll kind of try to drop it in there. <laughs> like they'll sort of prime the conversation for that. And I see this a lot with fearful avoidance. This isn't like one time, two times. This is a big pattern I've seen over and over again. So they'll kind of drop that in there nonchalantly. It's like they're digging and again, without having to be too vulnerable back. And they'll generally try to keep asking the questions towards you rather than having questions asked towards them. Um, and one thing that we talk about a lot, honestly, is that fearful avoidance when they're in this space of trying to reconnect, if you're the reconnector and you're thinking of trying to kind of win them back or reconnect with them, there's this zone that you don't want to go outside of. Like you do not want to trigger them to, to make them feel rejected because they'll just shut down and really deactivate strongly and be like, why did I bother kind of thing? But also if you are pushing things too fast and you try to get into this commitment territory and win things back or hash things out too fast, too soon, they will also deactivate because they'll get into the space of feeling like overwhelmed, scared, not sure, you know, is this going to work? And when they spiral, they may shut down, especially post breakup. Um, so you may see that they ask about your dating life nonchalantly, but again, they're trying to like avoid deactivating. That's they're staying in this kind of gray, like very middle zone, not wanting to get their anxious side triggered or feel rejected or shut down, but also not wanting to feel overwhelmed or pressured by the situation. I have, just so you know, if you want to do a deep dive, I have a full, um, it's called the FA Reconnection webinar, but it's really core style. It's about an hour and a half. It has a whole bunch of slides in it. Um, I'll put the link to that below if you want to join into that. But if you're trying to reconnect with a fearful avoidant, um, it gives you the roadmap. <laughs> Everything you need to know, not know, or sorry, know, and do not do. There's some really specific things you don't want to do that can really put a pin in things quick if you're trying to win back a fearful avoidant. Um, and we really talk about how to do it in a healthy way, how to know what your boundaries are, what's fair to you, what's healthy to you, what your non-negotiables are. We cover all of that stuff. And then exactly like the time periods at which to do what things, all that kind of stuff. And obviously that doesn't relate too much to the video today. Um, but if you want to do a deep dive into that, 
Um, I'm going to stay on track for the video, but I'll put the link down below and, and it's about an hour and a half long. It will give you everything you need to know. And if you want to check it out for free for 14 days, our 14 day free trial for mental health month is just about to wrap up. So your last chance to get access to it is before June 1st. So you can use the link below, check it out for 14 days for free. And I can't wait to see you on the other side. And then the fifth thing here that they will do if they miss you after a breakup, if you're trying to recognize it, is they will then try to see you. So they'll say, oh, you know, let's catch up. Let's hang out. Let's and they're trying to see you in person and rebuild that connection and see if that sort of passion and flame is still there by feeling into these steps carefully. So they reach out indirectly, the open up emotional conversation without trying to connect, trying to discuss commitment and rehashing nostalgic memories before that. And then ask about your dating life nonchalantly. And then, okay, you know, let's get together. If they see that you're not really seeing anybody or nothing serious, they might try to reach out and say, oh, why don't we grab a coffee and catch up or let's grab a drink or, you know, and, and they'll try to sort of prime it slowly, but surely. And it goes to this idea. And, and um, I have a video all about this on here as well, where it's like, why does the fearful avoidant act like they're in a relationship without being in a relationship or wanting to fully be in a relationship? Because they're trying to stay in that gray territory. They're trying to, um, I have a full video on that if you want to check it out, but it, they're trying to stay in the space of not feeling too anxious, um, and being too vulnerable that then leads them to feel too anxious, but they're also not trying to feel overwhelmed or pressured and make a commitment because they associate commitment with something can go wrong. My trust can be broken. Things can fall apart and they feel really pressured in that the vast majority of the time. So they try to really play it safe, but also deeply connect. Um, so anyways, you'll see these, these signs. You'll definitely see the progression of these signs if you've been re-communicating with an ex. And again, if you want to do a much deeper dive, you can check out that webinar style course all about the roadmap for reconnecting with a fearful avoidant. So thank you so much for watching. And again, if you want to check that out for free for 14 days using the link down below, then I would love to see you on the other side. And thank you for watching.